Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to give a sort of counter example to Clairaut's theorem. Now, obviously, the theorem isn't false, otherwise it wouldn't be called a theorem. But this is a this is a situation where some of the conditions don't hold, and we we will show eventually we will show that f sub x y of zero comma zero is not equal to f sub y x of zero comma zero. Even though both the mixed partials will turn out to be defined at the point, it will turn out that they are not equal. Okay. And the reason is it fails is that they are not going to turn out to be continuous. So the Clairaut's theorem says that if they are both continuous around the point, then they are equal, but they will turn out not to be continuous. Okay. Let's start out by trying to calculate these expressions. So let's first start out by calculating f sub x of x comma y, where x comma y is not 0, 0. Okay. So we are excluding the case 0, 0, because for the case 0, 0, we have to do it, think about it separately. Okay. What is f sub x of x comma y? So you have to use the quotient rule. So what do you get downstairs? Uh, square though for x square plus y square. Okay, now you'll get denominator times the derivative of the numerator, mm -hmm. right? So x square plus y square. Now the numerator is x cube y minus x y cube. x cube y differentiates to three y x square. Three x square y, and x y cube differentiates to y cube. Y cube minus the derivative of the denominator, which is just 2x times this thing. So it will be 2x square y times x square minus y square. Okay, now we need to simplify this. Okay, let's let's try to understand what put the denominator first. I don't want to forget that. Is that here? Mm -hmm. So x square x square y. So there will be some terms with x to the 4y in them. So x to the 4y you get a coefficient of 3 when you multiply these two. Yes. You will get a coefficient of minus 2 from here. Okay. It does not nowhere else where you get x to the 4y. So 3 minus 2 is 1. So you get x to the 4y. Okay. What about x square y cubed? You also have two terms. Well, you have three terms. You have this times this, which will give you a oh, plus okay. three. You have uh, this times this, minus which gives minus one. And then you have this times this, which gives you plus a plus one. two. A plus two, yes. So you get plus what? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. Very good. So good. Actually, many of these things will turn out not to matter. Any. So there's only one thing we really care about getting right. So you haven't yet come to, but... Uh, so what about y, the y to, to the, the five sense. with a minus sign? Right? There's only one term which gives that. Mm -hmm. And so, so we've done six terms, right? Yeah. We have two times two plus two. We got two here, three here, and one more here. That's it. You can do it more explicitly if you want, just to make sure you didn't get anything wrong. I already did this earlier, so I think that's correct. Okay. So f sub y of x comma y. Again, where the point is not 0, 0. So what will this be? Replace all x with y, how well that? Well, that's not quite symmetric. In x. Well, you can try doing that. Let's just redo it, uh, do it again and check later, check at the end if, if our answer matches that criteria. Mm -hmm. So you get x squared plus y squared times the derivative of the numerator x cubed mm -hmm. minus 3xy square okay minus 2y times xy so 2xy square times x square minus y square so we in both of these we are using the quotient rule for differentiation let's get here we here mm -hmm. So you'll have an x to the 5, that there's only one term here, then you have x cubed y square. So you have x cubed y square with a plus 1, uh, minus 3, 
-hmm. and a minus 2. So that's a minus 4. four. You're not cheating from here, right? Hey. And x, y to the 4, you'll get minus 3. Plus 2. Plus 2. So you get minus, minus one. 1. Okay, now we can do that checking. So, so x to the, so what, what, what you're saying was that, that these two will be equal except you, x, you flip the roles of x and y and you put a minus sign. Yes. Right? So x to the 5 became y to the 5 with a minus sign. 4x cubed y squared. Here you have a minus. Here you have a plus and uh, things got flipped around. And x, y to the 4, you have a minus and a plus. And the 4 and 1 got flipped around. So that matches up. Fine. Okay. So if we made a mistake, we made the same mistake in both places. Okay. So, well, I don't think we made a mistake. So, okay. Now let's, let's zoom in on f sub x of 0 comma y. And it'll become a little clearer why I'm doing this. But this is just a special case of the first thing. Okay. What is this? You just plug in x equals 0 in here. What will you get? Uh, negative y. Okay, why am I doing this? Well, eventually what I want to calculate is I want to calculate f sub x, y of 0, 0 and f sub y, x of 0, 0. Okay. So, what I want to insert up here. Mm -hmm. So, here's 0, 0. I want to calculate f sub x, y and f sub y, x. What I want to do is I want to say, let's say you are somewhere. So, what is f sub x, y of 0, 0 going to be? Well, it's going to be the, the rate at which f sub x changes as you move y, right? And this is going to be the rate at which f sub y changes as you move x. So, so if you look at the first one, f sub x, y, 0, 0, what you really care about is the values of f sub x at points on the y-axis, right? And then you will differentiate that with respect to y. Right? So you need to know the values of f sub x at points of the y-axis because that's what that's what matters to calculate f sub x y. If that's not clear, it will become soon. But but this is just a quick bit of advanced explanation of why we're doing this. What about f sub y of x comma zero for x not equal to zero? X. You're doing this while I was talking. Oh, no, you did that's the negative and you swap x and y. Oh, but you should plug it in here. So mm -hmm. x to the 5 minus 0 minus 0 over x square square. So x. Okay, great. Now we need to figure out uh, that space here. Let me just do it. What is f sub x of 0, 0? Well, we have to do this as a limit. We cannot use a derivative formula because th this is an isolated point definition. Okay, so that's limit as x approaches 0, f of x comma 0 minus f of 0, 0 over x. So this is just saying you're moving along the x-axis. Right, y is 0 and you're just taking this limit, difference quotient limit. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. What is f of x comma 0? When you plug in y equals 0, what does this become? 0. 0. So at 0, what is f of 0, 0? 0. So at 0 minus 0 over x, so that's limit of 0, so that's just, hmm? Limit of 0 is? 0. 0. So this is not, this is equal to 0 over approaching 0 not approaching zero. So it's, it's, it's a clear cut case of it being zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. And F sub Y of zero, zero is, uh, what limit is this? It's limit as Y approaches zero, F of zero comma Y minus F of zero comma zero over Y. What does that become? When you plug in x equals 0, what do you get as a limit? 
0. So it's 0 minus 0 over y. So that's limit of 0 over y. Limit of 0. This is. What's this? 0. zero. Okay. So now we are in a position to calculate f sub x y of 0 comma 0. So what is this? Well, this is f sub x sub y of 0 comma 0. Now, how can you calculate this limit? You cannot directly use a formula. You have to use the limit of a difference quotient. So you cannot use a differentiation technique. You have to write as a limit of a difference quotient. So what is this? This is limit as y approaches 0. Okay, so f sub x is sort of the function we are trying to differentiate. f sub x of 0 comma y minus what? Minus? F x sub x 0, 0. Divided by? Y. Y. Is this here? Yeah. Okay, so what is this limit going to be? Well, we already calculated everything, right? So this is minus y minus 0 over y. So what's that going to be? Negative 1. Okay, fine. Because I'm, I'm skipping a few steps, but it's basically you just plug in here and here and get this. Okay, what is f sub yx of 0, 0? So what limit will this be? 1. I mean, what limit expression will this be? I You're jumping the gun. I have sub 0. F sub y. Hmm. Of? Y. Of x, comma, x zero. comma 0. Minus f, f sub y, y of 0, zero, zero. comma 0. Over x. x. Right? And that's x minus 0 over x. So that's 1. So are we done? Did we, did we prove what we wanted to prove? We wanted to show that these num these two are both well defined, but they're not equal. We did that? Yeah. Minus one mm -hmm. and one? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and moreover, at any other point, other than the origin, both the partials exist. They are continuous everywhere except at the origin and they're equal. So, so that this is true whether this just is one point where the, both the partials still exist, but they're not equal. And the reason is that, that neither of them is continuous. If I ask you what is the limit of this thing, so you can do this. What is the limit of this thing as as the input point goes to zero? That limit is undefined. So both of these are discontinuous at at the origin, and that's why they're not equal. So it's not a real failure. It's yeah, it's, it's a failure of of what the sort of the naive version of clear which which you may think that partials are always equal. This says that yes, those conditions actually do matter. Okay. You can construct a convoluted example where this happens. Yeah. Thank you.